Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel. I would like to tell you a story about a man I knew who was dating a woman I knew. The woman met this man and they started dating and therefore he was introduced into my life. And this man had very bad luck he, I mean, consecutively. So he would lose his job all the time. Now, is that luck or not? You decide. He would lose his job all the time. At one job that he didn't get fired at, he got punched in the face by a coworker. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, that same week or maybe the week after he fell on some ice outside and busted up his foot. The man was a magnet to catastrophe. He also had a matching energy and I can't quite explain, well, I can't explain an energy to you, but it was, uh, I'll, I'll do my best. It was not disheveled, but chaotic. There wasn't a lot of purpose in his movements. He was just kind of out of sorts. I had a friend once who, when I was waiting tables and she was just, always in high gear. And I pulled her aside and I said, Hey, you need to slow down a little bit. And she said, I have one speed and it's frantic. And I thought that was very fitting for her. Know thyself. And she certainly did. So I guess it was a degree of frantic that this man had. And after a certain amount of time, I said to myself, I should not be, I didn't want to hang out with my friend anymore. By proxy, of the bad luck. Now, this is probably gonna get a bunch of people all ready to leave a comment, but here's the way I see it. Have you ever been biking and the chain comes undone? Yes, so you have to stop, you have to flip over your bike and you have to get all of the gears in and do one cycle so we know that it's running right. This is very much how I see life. I think it takes a lot of people a long time to get all of the gears in a way that they rotate freely. And life is going pretty well and you can pick up speed, you can even change gears when everything is fitting. But often, for a long time, we have our gears that are just like hitting each other. Everything should be operating well, but they're just hitting each other. And that's how I saw the fragility of my charmed life. I worked hard to be cheerful and do the right thing. Therefore, my existence was pretty dang good. It wasn't exorbitantly wonderful. I wasn't wealthy or anything, but I was doing just fine. And I knew the amount, the time that it took me to get those gears finally, 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 all into a sort where I could go through life picking up speed, changing gears, maneuvering corners. So I was writing in my journal and I wrote the word accustomed. I have kind of sloppy writing and I thought, you know what, do you have sloppy writing because you don't know how to spell a lot of words. So I'll just kind of like little and try to get the gist of it. So I'm like, okay, enough of that. I should know how to spell all the words that I use. So I looked up accustomed, which got me thinking. Accustomed, what is it? It is to become familiar with the usual, your usual. So my question is, what are you accustomed to in life? And with fresh eyes, would you look at your life? If you had the gift of fresh eyes, would you look at your life and think, oh, these things that I'm accustomed to are good. These things are things that I should be used to as a human being with dignity? Should I be used to these things? Or am I accepting something? Am I accustomed to something? Have I given a, an approval to something that is preventing all of the other gears to fall into place? This, rela this relationship, this uh, channel talks a lot about relationships because it's important. Most of your life, is going to be with another person if you choose to be in a relationship. Now in school, you can go for tw 12 years, 10,000 hours 
of compulsory education we have to learn what? Relationships? No. Okay, well, that's fine. What about formal education? When we go to school, additional school, are we learning how to be in a relationship? No. So the most important thing is a relationship, and it's the one thing that they don't teach at all. In fact, they would they tend to teach the antithesis of a smooth-geared relationship, right? It is selfishness, egoism, narcissism is what is being taught. So are you accustomed to something that is preventing all of those gears in place? Are you accepting something or a relationship, if you are not married in particular, that is wrong and you're just trying to, every day you're trying to grease the, the gear, grease it, grease it. You're just trying to figure out a way to make it all go smooth. And you've been trying with that grease for years and it's not working. Maybe you're trying with grease for a month. Maybe you've only been dating someone for three months and it's just not perfect. So you're greasing it. Should you be spending that time greasing a gear that doesn't want to fall into place. On the other hand, are you accustomed to something that is that needs grease? Here's some things that people become accustomed to and then we'll get off the phone. We're not on the phone. You know what I mean? Privilege. I, I, that's how I saw my charmed life. I mean, I swear, I, here, this was this was a day, a day in the life, and I that's when I started to believe that I had a charm life. This is years ago, but I was in Star at Starbucks, and some random person came up to me and said, "Hey, I have a coupon for this Starbucks coffee, and I never go to Starbucks. Do you want it?" I said that would be very nice. And then later on that day, I was looking around for parking, and I started to park in a spot where I'd have to put money in, and someone waved me down and was like, "Here, we're leaving." I thought, wow, this is a pretty charmed life. So think what you will about how that happened, but that's pretty lucky. So I was becoming accustomed to that charmed life. In turn, I would try to do good things all the time whenever I could and charm other people's lives because I was accustomed to that. Some people get accustomed to contempt or cheer, positivity, rudeness, struggle, bad luck. One more story. Years ago, I did a video about MGTOW versus feminism. And I, this was because I had a meetup and someone mentioned MGTOW. Everyone's like, what's that? We had a whole meetup discussing it. So I did a video about it, not knowing that it was as popular and uh, as ardently, uh, what word do I want to use? That there was so many devotees to it. Okay, so I did this, this video and it, I got a lot of mean comments in the beginning, a lot, a lot of hate. And it, it was interesting to me because I was a fine dining server and in fine dining, you date, you date, you wait on a lot of couples. It's a lot, it's a lot of celebrations and people tend to celebrate with their loved ones. Okay. And there's a lot of people in relationships. So I would wait on these people. It's what I did for a living. I've talked to tens of thousands of couples and I have a good experience. I have a good, a good lens. I see them pretty positively. But for a week, I took in 3000 comments that were really, really bad, mean, hateful, hateful, hateful. And I went to work on a, sh on a shift and I saw all the smiling women with their smiling companions through the lens of these hateful people. Gold digger. She'll take him for everything he has. She's sucking the life out of him. And I thought, whoa, it's so easy to tilt one's thinking. And this is the ugliest I've ever seen in the world. It was vile. I thought, well, no wonder these people are so upset because they are accustomed to seeing even happiness and contentment, love and loyalty as a very bad thing. Now I'm done. What do you think? What are you accustomed to? How are your gears? Is there one thing that you're trying to oil that is not going well? Is there a relationship that is out of sorts that needs to be tied? Like sever the ties is what I mean. What about work? Miserable? Have you ever heard of someone who got fired from a job they loved? I haven't. 
Would you be surprised if you got fired tomorrow? Blabbing for 10 minutes. Oh my God. I can't wait to hear what you have to say because for the most part, you guys are very, very intelligent. And I like that. Be well, my friends, be well.